would say Ambassador Komanescu is a teacher as well as a diplomat. Uh, and you'll see this as you see at least some of the highlights of his impressive career. Ambassador Komanescu uh, was born on June 4th, 1949, in the small town or the town of Horezu in the district Valsia, Romania. He graduated from the Faculty of International Trade within the Academy of Economic Studies in 1972 and became a Doctor of International Economic Relations in 1982. For 10 years, from the graduation until 1982, he was employed as a diplomat in the Department of International Economic Organizations within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Until 1990, he worked as assistant professor at the Department of International Economic Relations at the, of the Academy of Economic Studies in Bucharest. From 1995 until 1998, he was state secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and extraordinary ambassador to the European Union. During the next years, he was head of the Romanian mission to the uh, uh, NATO as well as the European Union and permanent representative of Romania to the European Union until 2008. 2008 was probably the high point of your career when you were then actually uh, made foreign minister for Romania. Uh, he served as foreign minister until his time actually as uh, ambassador, uh, where he now is fulfilling the role of the Romanian ambassador to Germany. So for many reasons, I really think it's, it's wonderful to have you here uh, representing Romania, as I said, uh, but also bringing with you such a rich history uh, that I think will really benefit us uh, greatly uh, as you uh, grace us with your, your lecture. Uh, the topic actually that the ambassador has chosen is Romania's economy, recent developments, and the prospects for the future. Please join me in a very, very warm welcome for His Excellency, Ambassador Lazar Comanescu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank very much to Mark Donfit for the kind words he pronounced about me. But I don't know, I'm not that sure if, if always when uh, somebody is, uh, has benefits of a CV which, uh, how to say, shows a lot of activities and so on, doesn't mean necessarily that uh, that CV is a guarantee for the highest possible performance. Hopefully I will not disappoint you this afternoon. Uh, especially since I, uh, I think I can say that uh, at least partially when I come here to the ISD, I feel it at home. Uh, it's my third or fourth time here, but as uh, Director Dovid mentioned uh, it's not just my participation here from time to time to deliver a speech or to have a dialogue with the participants, but uh, it's more than that. There, are, there is a close link between ISD and Romania, and I'm glad that uh, former high officials from my country are active uh, members of the leadership of the board and one of my best friends. Professor Pushkash, he's a co-organizing, co-organizer of uh, some important activities, as you mentioned, between here ICD and the, one of the most important universities in Romania, the, the University of Cluj. And by the way, since you referred, Mar uh, Mark, to my uh, incarnation as representative of Romania in Brussels, I have also to mention uh, that uh, Vasilya Pushkash and myself, we were the two guys from Romania who from the very beginning of this uh, process of uh, starting negotiations of accession for, to the European Union, to the very end we were closely working, I in Brussels, and he is Minister for European Affairs in Bucharest. So it's, it, it enabled us to become also friends, not just colleagues in the uh, profession. Now, uh, I'll try to be brief. Uh, and uh, as mentioned there, I'll try to speak a little bit about Romania, Romania's economy, but not necessarily the link of uh, the global atmosphere or glo global environment in, in which we are moving. Why? Because, and here b before that, I like to congratulate the ICD uh, leadership, Mark especially, for having selected this topic of, uh, uh, for today, I mean for, for this uh, edition of the, of the courses in the ICD, especially, well, th there may be somebody who, or people who would say, why? well, it's, 
Institute of Cultural Diplomacy, what the hell does it uh, has to do to, with the economy? Well, my answer to that would be the following. I mean, uh, looking into how the global economy evo has evolved in the last four, five years, I think that one should agree at least partially with the fact that some of the difficulties this global economy has encountered in the last four, uh, four or five years derived also from culture. From the one of them being the dimension of the culture of economy, the culture of development. And uh, if one looks into, for example, there are people who say that the origin of uh, the crisis, which is not yet totally overcome, may result from the culture of, of, of uh, too much money or too much finance against the culture of productive economy. And since we are here in Germany, I may also say that uh, at least some Germans may be right when they say that Europe should have paid more attention, and in the future it, will, it should be so, to the productive economy, material economy, against the financial economy, which is not supported by real material economy. And in the, the fact that Germany has been able to, to cross more rapidly the crisis may be an argument, because in Germany, in percentages, the contribution of the material economy, industry, and so on, it's significantly higher than in other parts of the world. And that helped, I mean, in keeping and improving the, as the German would say, Wettbewerb Fähigkeit, that means the performance, the competitiveness of the German economy. So just, it's, it's about culture again. So that's why I would say that it is a very good selection of the topic, because it helps us not to forget that there is a mutual relationship and impact and influence between culture, mindset, if, I want, if you want, and the way how we perform in economic activity. Now, there is a mutual influence. So, now, my, the topic is for me to speak about Romania, but I speak about Romania, of course, it's uh, the duty of a diplomat, of an ambassador, to promote his country. But I'm I'll try, what I'm trying to do now is not necessarily to make promotion, but to try to help in understanding where we are in this globalized world and where we are as a part of the European world, the European economy. Because if we are or not that performant, it's of course depending first of all on ourselves, Romanians, but it is equally and even more so in the globalized world, depending of, of what is happening around us and globally. Because you may agree with me that, uh, of course, we can always, we should always be realistic and uh, be aware of the fact that not all countries have the same, let's say, role or can perform the same role at the global level. There are countries which, due to their dimension, be it geographical, demographical, or the economic, uh, may have the resources and the capability to pay a certain role, while others with less capability or le less economic for, per, uh, force or less democratic uh, power may perform less. Nevertheless, the interdependency is there. And if in a one corner of the, of the world something happens, it may turn out that immediately it may have effect also on country far away from there. So it's in this context that I will try to say something to you about my country. I mentioned, I was making reference to the uh, economic and financial crisis which we crossed since uh, starting since 2007. Definitely, Romania could not escape the impact of this crisis. And actually what happened was that uh, in 2009, Romania's GDP dropped with more than 7%. And it continued to drop in 2010, though the, 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 the downward 
course was, uh, let's say, smaller. It, we registered, recorded only a negative growth of 2%, minus 2%. And of course, that had a, not that necessarily a very good impact on the situation in general in Romania. And we felt obliged, the Romanian authorities, but it is an important fact that all the Romanian society has accepted that, that there have to be some measures so as to prevent going even worse. So we entered into negotiations with the uh, IMF, with the European Commission, the World Bank, and successfully concluded a, an agreement with them, where through Romania got a loan of roughly 20 billion euros, which aimed us in re-equilibrating the economy. So that in 2011, last year, we succeeded to get back to positive growth and to provide for a macroeconomic stability which is recognized as such, not just by Romania. If some of you may have read reports by the IMF or the European Commission, you would uh, see their, their evaluation, which speaks about the fact that if one looks into the way how various member countries in Europe, member states in Europe, have been, able, have been able to get through this difficult period of crisis, Romania is considered to be one of the most successful. But I'm cautious. As I said, we have resumed the positive uh, growth. Last year it was 2.5, 2.5 positive, but if we take into account where from we dropped, it means that we are still below, well below the level of 208 in terms of GDP. Nevertheless, given the fact that now the macro stability is there, we do have good premises for starting now moving in a, towards a balanced and performance, a, uh, uh, c capable economy. Uh, just to give you, I, I already gave you some, uh, some figures, but perhaps to be more convincing in the fact that uh, we have crossed the worst in what was the impact of the crisis. I simply want to mention to you, for example, that last year, below, be, beside this 2.5 GDP growth, we've been able to reach all the targets which we established with the standby, within the standby arrangement with the European Commission and the IMF. Even we were able to perform a little bit better. Just to give some examples. The target for the budget deficit for last year, it was 4.4%. Well, we went to 4.3. Uh, the inflation rate, the target was 3.5. We realized 3.4. Not but that much difference, but, you know, in economic terms, that signifies good developments. For this year, for 12, our inflation rate target is 3%, while the budget deficit 1.9. So that, hopefully, but I'm very much cautious, by 2013, two years from now, uh, next year, we may reach the target of 2.5 inflation rate, 0% deficit. I said I'm cautious because well, definitely the main responsibility lies upon us. But we are at the same time part of Europe, part of the global economy. And we depend upon what's happening outside of Romania. Especially, and what's happening especially in the European Union area. But not only. Why I'm saying that? Because 70%, more than 70% of Romania's foreign exchange, foreign trade, is with, with the European Union. And if, as there is still a risk in this respect, the European economy 
continues to be in a low growth or even negative, there are some member states which are crossing already a recession period. Then definitely that would have an impact on us. So this is why Romania has been so much in favor of devising, identifying at the level of the European Union as a whole, measures and actions aimed at providing for a predictable, predictable and balanced economic policies within the European Union. That's why Romania, while although not yet member of the, Euro, of, 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 uh, the Eurozone, we joined the Eurozone member states and the other member, members of the European Union in the elaboration and the adoption of important measures which have been adopted in the last 10, 12 months. I'm referring, for example, to the Pact, Euro Plus Pact, to the so-called famous six-pack, and as of late, Romania is among the non-member of the Eurozone who signed the so-called fiscal pact or the pact for uh, the, 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 the name as such is much longer. Treaty on Stability, Coordination and Governance in the European Monetary Union. Why? Because this is the framework, in our opinion, which provides for enabling the European economy as a whole, keeping being competitive in the global world. Otherwise, no chance for that. Irrespective of how big a country is or how performant at a certain moment a country or a sector in a country may be. Given this increasing global competitive competition, only looking at the European Union as an economy, as an economic entity, would Europe be able to keep playing the role of a key actor, globally speaking. I was uh, the other day in a meeting where we, talk, we were talking about where Europe finds itself. And uh, as of today, Europe means 80%, 8% of the total population of the world and 30% of the global GDP. In less than 20 years from now, even earlier, Europe would be roughly 4% of the global population and probably if, if the Europe doesn't take the necessary measures, Europe would, be, would get down to some 10% of the global economy. And this is something which one has to take care about. Otherwise, as there are some people who would say, Europe risks to transform itself in kind of a museum about how nice to live in. But if you don't have resources, I'm wondering how that would be, uh, that would be um, feasible. So, uh, I feel encouraged, as far as coming back to Romania, I feel encouraged that uh, the last years, the way how the last years economy has evolved and the, the way how things seem to move this year, then we've been able not just, let's say, providing for the macro stabilization, but also in between, the Romanian authorities were able to take some very important measures to provide for a, an increased competitiveness of the, of the, of the, of the uh, Romanian economy. Just to give you one example, which may be an indicator, I'm not that sure, because we need a longer period of time to, let's say, to make evaluation or definitive conclusions about how things may evolve. But nevertheless, in a uh, period of... Uh, which is still characterized by crisis. Europe is not yet recovered totally. Those uh, signals are encouraging, especially when you look into the greatest European economy, Germany. But here too, I saw that even today in the media, one speaks about the fact that the slowdown of the German economy growth. But nevertheless, in this period of crisis, Romania has been able to reach a record in terms of foreign trade and especially in terms of exports. Which means that Romania was able to 
upgrade, if I may say so, her capability to perform in a competitive, more and more competitive world. That's an important point because, as I said, we've got a record last year in terms of Romania's exports in the world and more than 70% in the European Union. And uh, I think you will agree with me that the European Union is a quite, uh, let's say, uh, competitive market. It's not that easy to get into the European market. You have to have good products for that. Uh, of course, this is encouraging, but uh, we are not yet there to say, I am not there to say that things are certain. Beyond what I have said about the uh, still uncertain developments European level or global level, at the global level, it depends also and very much on the way how the Romanian authorities, the Romanian politicians, given the fact that this year there is, it's an electoral year. We have local elections in, uh, in June. We have parliamentary elections in November. And I hope, to be very honest, I hope that the Romanian politicians have well understood that from time to time at least, as it happens in other parts of Europe as well, and especially in, in all democratic worlds, politicians are so much concentrated on uh, getting sure that they get re-elected, so they pay so much attention to considering developments, be it economic and political and so on, to the five or four years period of electoral cycle, so that they, from time to time, they forget that economic development and progress has to be looked at and respectively policies have, have, have to be divided, uh, developed so that one look into a much longer period. So that's why I say that I hope that the main politicians have already become convinced that they should avoid, for the sake of being re-elected, uh, promising things which may generate or adopting measures which at the end of the day may result in negative effects on the Romanian economy. So that's why I said, uh, that's another argument why I said that I have to be cautious. But looking into what has already been adopted, there are some elements which in my opinion, irrespective of what the politician will say, the framework has so far become at least partially irreversible. Last year, Romania, the Romanian parliament adopted a new code of, the, of labor, which is in conformity with the principles of the free market economy, and w which mainly hints at stimulating the employers to generate employment. As you have, may have seen, and it is good that uh, while uh, in, the, in 2010 and 2011, at the EU level, everybody was concentrated in the European Council and so on, ECOFIN Council, my Ministers of Finance and so on, the IMF on the other side. Everybody was concentrated on measures aiming at managing the Eurozone sovereign debts and crisis. But happily, and the last, the last week's European Council, for the first time in almost two years, did not concentrate on this, let's say, current issues. In fact, for the first time in two, almost two years, the heads of state of the European Union member states have concentrated on growth and employment, looking to the future. So Romania has been one of the contributors in this respect, not just through positions which were expressed in Brussels or elsewhere, but also through the measures which have been taken at the, at the national level. Romania has a Good potential. But again, to make the Romanian economy more performant, we have to be more selective in defining the priority directions in which, on which Romania should concentrate. And first and for, foremost, in my opinion, direction is that of modernizing the Romanian infrastructure. We still are 
have not enough, for example, highways. And I remember, since I was foreign minister of my country, at a certain moment, there was a, an interest from uh, an important automaking company to set up a plant in Romania. But at the end of the day, they gave up because while making the uh, calculations about costs and benefits, because the fact that there is, there is no direct auto, uh, highway between that location, which were somewhere in the center of Romania, to the Western Europe, the calculation were so that they determined the respective company to give up. Should Romania had, has, have had that highway, definitely would have had more employment in Romania and, of course, more productive capac capacity. So infrastructure. Infrastructure is important also from the other perspective. There are two sectors where Romania is extremely, has an extremely good potential to be much more performant than other countries. I'm referring to the agricultural potential. Judging by uh, ratio of agricultural land, good quality, by the way, and population, I may not be denied by the realities that Romania is perhaps the best place in Europe. But we still are there with an agriculture which, is, which still needs a lot of modernization. But it also has to do with the infrastructure. And when I'm referring to the infrastructure, I'm not just referring to highways and uh, modern roads, but I'm referring to the local infrastructure, the development of the utilities at the, in the rural areas so as to enable people not just be dependent upon the weather outside. If it's sunny, it's, it's good rain, quantity rain, you have good harvest, but it may happen that it's too much rain, like, like it was happening a few do, two years ago in Romania, and you had a lot of floods. This winter, we have been facing a very hard winter, very heavy snowfalls, which may, hopefully not, cross fingers, result now with the spring coming back and the, the warmer weather, we may risk floods with the impact on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the GDP as a whole. Again, another, uh, another so this, this is important also from the perspective of, 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 uh, of uh, infrastructure. But on the other hand, and Romania already started to make some important progress in following the trends of what would be the food processing industry and agriculture of the future, notably the bio-agriculture. And uh, this is not by mere chance, therefore, that Romania would be next year the partner land, partner country, in the most important bio-fach, bio bio-agriculture, bio uh, fair in the world, which is the one in Nuremberg, the f famous biofach. Romania would be the partner land because Romania has already something to offer. And it's again not by mere chance that we are doing that here in Germany because Germany is, one, it, is the leading in terms of consumption of bio products. So it's a potential, important potential. A second one is that of tourism. But again, he, that's dependent on infrastructure. Third, and not less important, and here I have to say that in spite of what one may consider from afar, but it is a reality, Romania has been one of the most performant countries in terms of developing the IT industry. It is not by chance that companies like Microsoft or Apple have, devi have developed important capabilities in Romania capacities in Romania. It's in Romania where we have, where there is an important training center which has been uh, developed by Apple just in Romania, which is covering not, not only Romania, but all the southwestern, uh, southeastern part of Europe and Central Europe. Uh, you may know that according to some statistics, 
if you go to the Silicon Valley and the, in the western part, of, yeah, in the Seattle and that part of the, of the United States, the Romanians are second only to the Indians in terms of foreigners working in the IT in the United States. This, what makes me be, uh, becoming optimistic is the fact that these guys, Romanians, who have been training themselves there and starting doing business there, they are now starting coming back to Romania. And this is something which, yet, yet again, we can speak about another area or uh, domain where the Romanian economy could be performant in, as I said, more and more highly competitive economy, globally speaking. Um, Of course, I could uh, get in more details about, about other measures which have been uh, so far taken in Romania, but uh, probably I will take too much of your time on, for that. Simply to mention some other aspects which are related to the uh, macro policies. You know, in this world of competition, the way taxation is something which is very important. And this is why Romania, since 2005, adopted this uh, policy of a flat tax, 16%. And despite of the uh, difficulties which have been crossing, we stick to that. Because it's proved to be quite stimulating for business, not only uh, local business, but also for, for uh, foreigner, foreigners coming to invest in Romania. The legislation in labor I have already mentioned. And Yet another point which is very much important also for the economy is the legal framework. And especially because, you know, in activities, in, in commercial activities, you cannot avoid, irrespective of where you are from and where you are working in, to come when two partners, they may come to some commercial dispute or need of settlement of disputes, and you appeal to the court or to, you appeal to the legal, legal, legal people, lawyers. And I have to recognize that in Romania, the legal framework was quite cumbersome. But in the course of last year, Romania adopted a new civil code, a new civil uh, procedural code, a new penal code, and now the, lay, the, 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 the basis is there for a much better functioning legal framework in Romania, which has been evaluated as such by the European Union, by the European Commission. Coming back to Romania and the global economy. As I said, of course, it, the, uh, the main responsibility for a national economy to be performed lies on that country, on the governments of the, the, the respective country. But it is not enough. It, one has, to, one has to take into account the global. First of all, as far as we are concerned, we have to take into account that we are part of Europe. And what we want to do is not just being part of Europe to react to what others may decide. No, we are part of Europe, and the which is decided, Romania is decided, and I think that it has been, a, has been able so far to do something in this respect, decided to be a contributor a direct contributor to the elaboration of the European policies. And definitely, definitely the economic policy at the, at the level of the European Union is are of key importance. That's why you've been uh, participating in this and very much important. You may have, definitely you know, that uh, when this discussion about the uh, adoption, negotiation and adoption of a new fiscal pact, the one which, with the long title, Treaty on Stability, coordination and government, governance, economic governance in the European Monetary Union. There were ideas that this is something which should stick to limit to the Eurozone. There were some heads of state or governments who were promoting this type of approach. We Romanians from the very beginning said that this is not, that would be not in the logic of strengthening the European Union. It has to be a contribution and a an exercise where all the members of the European Union who so wish to participate in. 
and it, it, it is all the more so as the new member states, Romania being one of them, to their accession treaties, they committed themselves. It's a legal commitment that these countries, Romania included, they committed, obliged themselves to become part of, part of the Eurozone. So it would have been totally le uh, lacking logic to have a fiscal, fiscal pact only limited to the euros, uh, to the 17 or whatever they are. So, uh, so and uh, we are glad that, including due to the insistence activism of Romania, this has been done, except for the UK, which by its own will decided not to join the fiscal pact and most probably temporary, temporarily the Czech Republic, all the other member states of the European Union signed the treaty last Friday. Uh, and this is an important, in my opinion, step towards strengthening the European Union as an economic entity, but that's not enough. It has to be accompanied, because you cannot, one could not think that we are able, as the EU, to have a uh, strong economic and monetary union without a harmonized, at least for the beginning, a fiscal policy which is coordinated and correlated among the member states, to, to name just a few, uh, uh, an example, but it also has to do with coming to a more and more political union. It's the only, how to say, it's the sine qua non condition, as I said from the very beginning, that the European Union keeps being competitive at the global level. So, uh, these were the few aspects which I want to mention. I would perhaps only add another aspect. Of course, I mentioned already that uh, more than 70% of the uh, Romanian foreign trade is with the member states of the Europe, other member states of the EU within the EU. It doesn't mean that for us, other regions, other partners are not also important. On the contrary, and I have to say that while there is not a contradiction between uh, being part of the European Union and having as close as possible ties, economically speaking, first of all, and commercial, with other parts of the world. And from this perspective, I would say that there is on the, 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 one may also uh, may see some kind of a mutually reinforcing approach. Why, for, for example, looking at Romania, development by Romania of the relations with countries outside the European Union, they prove to be beneficial for the Union as a whole. Because if one looks into the, let's say, geographical location of Romania, Romania has the capability to play the role of a hub for many businesses within the European Union, but with outreach beyond the borders of the European Union. I'm referring, for example, to not just the Western Balkans, because the Western Balkans, sooner or later, they become or will become members of the European Union as well. But if one looks into the uh, Middle East, or Central Asia, or Russia, I think that it is, I mean, it would be a uh, clear advantage for companies developing business activities in Romania and then from there moving further to the east. I'm, you, you know that, for example, the European Union has adopted in 2007 a strategy for the Central Asia, which is mainly aimed at the energy, energy dimension. Romania has had, had very good relations, well, traditional relations with the countries from the Central Asia from during the, the Soviet time. I was, as foreign minister, I was visiting some of the countries in Central, uh, Central Asia. And of course, talking about energy, 
so on. But the people whom I met, they were telling me the following. Why don't you remember, even if they was, were using the word remember, why don't you remember the fact that Romanian technicians, engineers, and so on, they were very much active in developing water management resources, water resources management in countries like Turkmenistan or Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan and so on. And now there is no Romanian uh, engineer and so on. And you are a member of the European Union. You have technology there, you have expertise. Come, don't come only for the energy. Everybody comes from Europe to us for energy. But there are a lot of other economic necessities in those regions where which generate or at, which do represent very good basis for long-term business opportunity, opportunities for the companies in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in Europe, in the member states of the European Union. So Romania is one of the countries which are in the front line promoters of strengthening the EU's ties with, with that region. But doesn't mean that I am limited. I just, just gave an example. Of course, if we look into the emerging economy, which I would say, I think that already the idea of speaking about emerging, calling, for example, China or Brazil or as an emerging economy, it's already something which belongs to the past. Even today, I've seen that Brazil has become the sixth, sixth larger global economy. It's now ahead of UK. So I don't know whether we can continue speaking anymore about emerging. They are already well established, well established, uh, let's say, economic uh, actors. So that's why I come back and stress the, the fact that we Romanians, we are looking also in developing more and more opportunities for business outside the European Union which is good for Romania, but definitely which is good for Europe as a whole. So that's what I wanted to mention to you. I may have been uh, too long. I don't know how many time we have for a bunch of questions. I am ready to listen to hopefully, may I, be, may I may be able also to, to answer to or to give at least partially satisfactory answers. Thank you. <laughs>